The wild grapevine that somehow lassoed a nearby tree is a favorite stopping point on the return trail. Visitors are asked to speculate how this growth pattern could have occurred. We can only guess. The teaching point is that wild grapevine is an important succession plant. It thrives in sun and languishes, eventually dying in deep shade. It can spread prostate over the ground, or it can use its tendrils to climb vertically over obstacles such as fences, or it can climb into the canopy of the tallest trees. It is an important food source for a long list of birds and mammals. Birds that use grapevine tangles as nesting habitat include the northern cardinal, brown thrasher, gray catbird, and northern mockingbird. This photo shows a spice bush and fall displaying one of its red berries. This shade-tolerant understory shrub or small tree rarely exceeds 12 feet in height and ranges widely across the eastern United States. It is one of the earliest spring bloomers with yellow flower clusters adorning bare branches. The shrub is an important part of the forest ecosystem. The flowers attract insects and the berries are a favorite food of raccoons, opossums, and black bears which benefit the tree by dispersing its seed. The plant can also spread by producing stolons, which are specialized stem structures spreading from the mother tree at ground level that can take root and form a small colony of new trees. The leaves are an essential food source for spicebush swallowtail larvae, one of Ohio's strikingly beautiful butterflies. Unlike most native Ohio plants, American witch hazel doesn't bloom until late fall or early winter. Small yellow flower clusters with four long, twisted, narrow petals appear on the bare branches of witch hazel long after the leaves of surrounding trees have fallen. The wavy leaf margins and the asymmetric leaf base, making an oblique angle with the leaf stem, are easy to see field marks for identifying it in summer. The seed pods explosively eject their spring-loaded seeds up to 30 feet. It's a dispersal mechanism that keeps the tree from competing with its own offspring. People have been using the mildly aromatic extract of its leaves, twigs, and bark to make astringent lotions and liniments for centuries. With its glossy green leaves and sharp spines, Greenbrier is easy to identify. At Little Mountain, it is especially common along the entrance trail, occurring as thin crawling shrubs or as vines reaching up to 30 feet high on the tree trunks. It shares membership in the lily family with daylilies, lily of the valley, and yucca. It grows in a wide range of habitats throughout eastern North America from Florida to Canada. Viewed by many as little more than a thorny persistent weed, it does play an important role in the ecosystem. Birds eat its bluish blackish berries, spreading its seeds. It can also spread by tubers and rhizomes, which double as food for mammals. A member of the honeysuckle family. Maple leaf viburnum grows three to six feet high unless browsed by deer. This is a true understory plant that requires shade to thrive. Native to eastern North America, its range is from Florida to Canada. It is sometimes used as a landscape plant in shady gardens thanks to its attractive cream-colored flowers, dark purplish berries, and reddish purple leaves in fall. A wide variety of birds and mammals eat the berries, twigs, leaves, or bark, and it also makes good nesting habitat and escape cover for birds and small mammals. It is vulnerable to the Eurasian viburnum leaf beetle, a non-native invasive insect known for quickly skeletonizing 100% of the leaves on a plant. Birds of Little Mountain The arch enemy of carpenter ants and wood boring beetles, the pileated woodpecker began appearing in large numbers at Little Mountain during the 1980s, signaling infestation of the eastern hemlocks by the hemlock borer. This is America's largest woodpecker, known for drilling oval holes in tree trunks up to several feet long and six inches deep. Its maniacal call and loud resonant drumming makes this shy bird more likely to be heard than seen.
Dark-eyed juncos, or snowbirds, are normally winter migrants to Ohio, arriving in November and then departing in April to return to breeding grounds as far north as the Canadian tundra and Alaska. The sole exception in Ohio are small breeding populations that reside year-round in hemlock ravines of the northeastern corner of the state, hidden in secluded habitats like Stebbins Gulch and the crevasses of Little Mountain. These widespread and common members of the sparrow family live in small flocks with firmly established pecking orders. They're often seen double scratching the ground with both feet in a sort of backward hop to expose seeds and insects. They have bright white outer tail feathers that flash in flight. The neotropical migrant with a beautiful flute-like song visits Little Mountain in large numbers during the migration. Wood thrushes breed throughout the eastern United States and in every Ohio county, up to the southern fringes of eastern Canada. They winter in lowland tropical forests in Central America. The species is rapidly declining in numbers due to habitat loss at both ends of its range. Wood thrushes need mature forests with large trees, a well-developed understory shrub layer, and thick leaf litter to forage for insects. Other factors recently impacting this bird's habitat are acid rain, which retards leaf litter development, invasive non-native earthworms, which quickly digest and remove the leaf litter, and forest fragmentation, which is opening up avenues for nest parasitism by cowbirds. One of our earliest returning migrants in spring, eastern Phoebes immediately get to work building or refurbishing mud and grass nests in protected nooks of cliffs and bridges or under the eaves of barns and houses. These tail-wagging, insect-eating songbirds overwinter in the southern United States and Mexico. Their summer breeding range extends all the way to northern Alberta and beyond, making them one of the northernmost flycatchers. The nest pictured in the insert was built under a rock overhang near the entrance of Devil's Kitchen at Little Mountain. Eastern Phoebe nests can be found on Creekside Cliffs in Stebbins Gulch, Penitentiary Glen, Phelps Creek, and other deep ravines throughout northeast Ohio. Usually deep in shade, they're easily overlooked. This is the only spotted thrush that overwinters in the United States, in our case in Ohio, in the southern half of the state. The hermit thrush's flute-like, somewhat mournful song is said by some to be the most beautiful of all the thrushes, a bird family with lots of great songsters. It has a reddish-brown tail and rump, and has the habit of slowly raising and lowering its tail. Hermit thrushes forage for insects on the forest floor in the leaf litter where they are mo almost perfectly camouflaged and difficult to spot. These birds prefer hemlock gorges and unbroken forests as breeding sites nesting on or near the ground. The rapid expansion of residential areas around Little Mountain could make this species vulnerable to feral and free-roaming domestic cats. A first glimpse of this neotropical migrant with its bright scarlet head and body offset by black wings and tail has been known to convert otherwise normal human beings into dedicated birders. Only the males carry the brilliant plumage and only during the short summer breeding season. The rest of the year they turn a drab, grayish yellow and olive looking much like the females. Scarlet tanagers spend most of their time hunting for insects in the tops of tall trees, making them difficult to spot, especially the females. 
They prefer breeding in large and broken forests, habitats that are becoming ever more challenging to find in our increasingly urbanized and suburbanized landscapes. In fall, they migrate as far south as Bolivia, where they feed mainly on tropical fruits in the rainforest canopy. Uncommon plants. Northern starflower, a spring blooming member of the primrose family, has seven leaves, seven sepals, and seven petals. A native perennial wildflower, it prefers cool woods, high slopes, dappled shade, and moist soils in either deciduous or coniferous forests. It has no problem growing in the sandy acidic soils on top of Little Mountain. This tough little plant with one half inch blooms ranges as far north as the Canadian Yukon. The small, hardy, deciduous shrub pictured here, known for its bad smell, ranges over the northeastern U.S. and eastern to central Canada. Bristly sarsaparilla is a member of the ginseng family. It thrives in sandy, dry, sterile soils of shady, rocky woods and cliff tops, an excellent description of the habitat on Little Mountain. The bark and roots were prized for making teas and medicines of questionable effectiveness. Bristly sarsaparilla is now listed as endangered in Ohio, Indiana, and Maryland. American ginseng is a perennial herb of the ivy family long used by Native Americans for medicinal purposes, good luck charms, and love potions. This once common plant is now rare in the wild thanks to high demand from China as a traditional Chinese medicine. The attractive plant, easily overlooked on the forest floor, grows in deciduous forests ranging from the American Midwest to Maine and eastern Canada, and also occurs in the Appalachians and Ozarks. The plant has palmately compound leaves arranged in a single whorl around a central stalk. Deep red berries appear in the fall. The big attraction of ginseng is the light tan gnarled root that can resemble a human body with stringy arms and legs. It takes six to ten years for marketable roots to form. Current prices for dried ginseng root range from six hundred to eight hundred dollars a pound, subjecting wild populations to over collecting and illegal harvesting. This native perennial orchid often grows in association with eastern white pine, sassafras, and greenbrier, and can tolerate acid soils and a wide range of shade and moisture conditions, all of which are found on Little Mountain. It ranges across the eastern United States and northward almost to the Arctic Circle in Canada. Its biggest enemies are the hungry white-tailed deer and the many generations of admiring Americans who continue to remove it from the forest to transplant it in their yards, only to watch it die. It is now endangered or vulnerable in a number of states. Pink Lady Slipper grows very slowly and can live for 20 years. It needs strong insects like bumblebees to force open the petals to pollinate the blooms and requires a specific species of fungus found in forest soils to open the seeds and to facilitate nutrient exchange. If you find this plant in the forest, take a photo and leave it for others to admire.